This is a reenactment of a crime. The names and places have been changed to protect the public. On a balmy summer day on the East Coast, the still warm body of Mary Hawkins was found in the courtyard of the Beauregard Estate, where she was employed as a maid. Mary's body was found split in half, clearly the victim of a violent crime. The primary suspect of the crime was Crispin Lewis, the estate's gardener. Witnesses described them as polar opposites, and they were last seen together arguing. Say, Crispin, have you thought any more about looking for another job like we talked about? Why do you always say things about my job? I like my job, Mary. It's very important for the proper care and smooth running of the estate. I know, Crispin, I know. But if we are to run away together, don't you think you should be making more money than just a simple gardener? Mary, how can you say such things? We do not need money to keep us happy. We just need each other. All you need is love, Crispin. But love does not buy me a beautiful wardrobe. A girl needs to be properly taken care of. You can't possibly be serious, Mary. Do I mean so little to you? Well, no, but it would help if you had a better job. Sometimes, those who are polar opposites of us are who we are most strongly attracted to. Upon further investigation and interviews with the rest of the estate staff, Mary and Crispin have this particular fight each week, and it's nothing new. For this reason, detectives started looking at other suspects. Whew, boy, that was some fight. Mary and Crispin represent the strongest of the intermolecular interactions, electrostatics. They're perfect to represent this interaction because Mary is negative. She's a negative person. That's all that she wants is Crispin to make more money. And Crispin is a positive person. He thinks that that's all they need is love. They're opposites, but yet they still attract. And this makes Crispin the number one suspect in our murder history because he is a part of the strongest of the intermolecular interactions, electrostatics. And now, over to you, Dan, to explain the chemistry behind this. Electrostatic interactions occur between molecules or atoms with separate and opposite charges. As you've heard before, opposites attract. So as we have here, opposites attracting. Positive charges are attracted to negative charges, and positive charges repel other positive charges. And likewise, negative will also repel other negative. Common examples of this that you'll see in organic chemistry are NaOH and NaOCH3. This type of interaction is also very prominent in many interactions between amino acids within proteins. This helps give the proteins its function and it's also its functional shape. That's all for now. Let's get back to see who the next suspect is. Upon clearing Crispin of the crime, the detectives began to dig a little bit deeper. It appeared that the Beauregard brothers, Octavian and Fernandino, had both been trying to keep their private love affairs a secret. What they had not seemed to be aware of, however, was that their relationships had actually been a love triangle with Miss Hawkins. What do you mean you've been sleeping with the maid, you bloody stupid fool? Well, she's just so interesting. She really understands me, you know? Now is not the time to sound like a rom- Wait, do we happen to have more than one maid? No, just the lovely Mary. What? You're sleeping with my mistress? What? She's my porky. <laughs> okay, okay. We have to think clearly about this. She's been fooling both of us. D did you give her money too? Oh, Lord. With the testimony of a few key eyewitnesses, the picture had become more clear. Miss Hawkins had been leading both Octavian and Fernandino in the hopes of receiving enough money from the two rich brothers to be able to run away with her lover Crispin. After learning this, neither of the brothers would be willing to face the indignity that they had shared Miss Hawkins as a mistress. But would that lead them to commit such a grisly murder? 
Or was the possibility of their other mistresses figuring out too much of a burden? Wow, this just keeps getting more interesting. So Octavian, Fernando, and Mary Hawkins obviously were in a love triangle. Mary Hawkins was using both of the brothers to acquire something she lacked, money. This is somewhat synonymous to a hydrogen bond, our second strongest intermolecular interaction. It takes three atoms to make a hydrogen bond. The hydrogen itself, and an, an electron-rich donor, and an electron-rich acceptor. A donor and an acceptor can be one of three atoms, oxygen, nitrogen, or fluorine. And now over to Haley to explain a little more of the science behind hydrogen bonding. Okay, so like Dan said, hydrogen bonding requires three atoms, kind of like a love triangle between Octavian, Mary, and Fernandino. Except for in this case, a hydrogen atom is covalently bonded to an oxygen, and it's hydrogen bonding with a fluorine. So because oxygen is so electronegative, it hogs all of the electrons, leaving this hydrogen with a partially positive polarization. This partially positive hydrogen is attracted to a very electronegative fluorine atom. This fluorine atom is what we consider the hydrogen bond acceptor because it's accepting the hydrogen. This oxygen is what we would call the hydrogen bond donor because it's donating the hydrogen to form the intermolecular interaction with the fluorine. Hydrogen bonds are the second strongest type of intermolecular interaction, and they're, they're immense. They're everywhere. You'll see them all the time in organic chemistry. They're particularly important for holding together the double strands of DNA, and also in those interactions between amino acids and protein that give proteins the shape that therefore affect their function. Now let's find out who killed Mary Hawkins. At this time, with the first three suspects eliminated, the police were running out of time. <coughs> just, just one second, narrator man. Um, okay, just a quick side note. Sorry to interrupt. But the third strongest intermolecular interaction is called dipole-dipole. However, we couldn't really fit this into our murder mystery story, so I'm just going to explain it to you here really quickly, okay? So a dipole-dipole interaction occurs when two molecules both have dipole moments are attracted to each other. The easiest way to explain this is with an example. So here's a ketone. You've all seen a ketone before, right? And you know that there is an unequal distribution of the electrons. Since the oxygen is electronegative, it hogs them all, leaving this carbon with a partial positive charge and the oxygen with a partial negative. When a ketone pairs up with another ketone that has an opposite dipole moment, they have what we call a dipole-dipole intermolecular interaction. It's the third strongest, like I said, but it's still important because it's also important in those proteins. Again, I know we keep coming back to proteins, but they're really important, and this is one of the key intermolecular interactions. Okay, carry on with the murder mystery, Mr. Mayor, 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 I'm sorry. As I was saying, <clears throat> at this time, with the first three suspects eliminated, the brothers had solid alibis, the police were running out of time. They began to question what they had learned about the suspects and the case. Besides the three main suspects, there appeared to be no one with a motive, opportunity, or even the time to kill Miss Hawkins. It was by pure happenstance that the detective overheard that an expected package had not arrived at the estate. An expensive package. Hello, Mary. Hello, Fergus. Is that Mary Hawkins' blood? It was the mailman the whole time. Who would have thunk? As it turns out, the mailman had delivered a very expensive package to the estate, and Mary tried to sign for it, even though she wasn't a resident of the estate. When the mailman refused, Mary became very agitated and attacked the mailman. He claims to have stabbed her in self-defense, and rather than leaving the package at the scene of the crime, he decided he could make more money by claiming the package had been lost and then selling the contents of the package himself so that he and his lover, Chris Ben Lewis, could run away together. I did not see that coming. The mailman probably didn't either. Okay, so he was the last suspect because he was the least likely 
to occur, similar to how Van der Waals interactions are the weakest of the, inter or the molecular interactions. So, because they happen due to random shifts in electron density within nonpolar compounds. So, for example, we have these chains of carbons covalently bonded here, and due to the random flying around of the electrons, they occasionally end up unevenly distributed. And this leads to partial positive, partial negative charges being located there that cause short interactions, basically just due to random chance. Similar to how the mailman killed Mary just due to the random circumstances that led to him being able to you know, have that package and then you know, having to kill her and blah, blah, blah. So there you go, it's just kind of random, happens, better balls. Okay, so quick recap, okay? So we've covered a lot throughout this murder mystery, but we're just going to recap some of the key points, all right? Number one, strongest intermolecular interaction is electrostatics, opposites attracting. Just like Mary and Crispin. Then number two, we have hydrogen bonding, which is the sharing of the electron pore molecule, so hydrogen, just like between Fernandino, Mary Hawkins, and Octavian. And next, dipole-dipole, which we couldn't fit in, but the main point is that it's attraction between two molecules that have dipole moments. And then finally, we have the van der Waals forces, which is just that due to random chance, the unequal sharing of electrons spinning around there creates the little molecule here, just like how the mailman killed Mary, because you know, just happened. Okay, and then the most important point is never, ever, ever trust your mailman. Tune in next time for Behind the Bars, Confessions from Confirmational Analysis.